This hour, the podcast is exclusively sponsored by my good friends at Advantage Gold. Advantage Gold is a five-star rated gold company with one-of-a-kind customer service. And when it comes to gold and precious metals, Advantage Gold is the only company I'll work with. Call Advantage Gold today and make sure you let them know that Mark Levin sent you. And now, let's begin. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post... Deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. Now, the Supreme Court decision today, 9 to 0 was the vote, but the vote conceals what really took place and should be very concerning to those, those of us who are constitutionalists. The 14th Amendment, Section 3, we've talked about ad infinitum. I was the first to really address this, to confront it. I said, this is what they're doing. This is what they want to do, is to take Trump off the ballot, claim insurrection, and all the rest. The five justices in the majority were 100% correct. They said, look, essentially, Congress determines... Congress determines if the federal constitutional's 14th Amendment is violated. I would have gone much further. President's not mentioned on the list of candidates, office holders. This amendment would never, ever had applied to a matter of federalism since indeed the Civil War had just been won, and they were not going to confer power on states to make a determination about insurrection and whether or not a president could be on the ballot. The president was specifically, specifically not placed in Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, period. Look, look as you might. You have people saying, well, Congress doesn't say Congress makes the only decision. Well, actually, Section 5 does, but let's put that aside. It's a federal case. It's a federal matter. I would even argue, you know, they say, oh, the, the majority went too far. No, it didn't. So what am I talking about? Here's the deal. You have four justices who don't care about the Constitution. The three radical leftists Sotomayor, Kagan, and Jackson. They said, just overturn Colorado and be done with it. Don't go any further. And they claim, in essence, to be federalists, which, of course, they're not. They're leftists. Now, do you want to know why they did that? They did that because they know that communist Marxists like Jamie Raskin, who's done it before in other electoral college counts that take place on January 6th, 
will object to the the counting of the ballots for Trump and claim that he's an insurrectionist. Now, it likely wouldn't go anywhere. But nonetheless, that's his plan. And the three Democrat radical justices are in on the plan. I don't mean they've talked to, to them. It's just obvious that they, they're trying to protect it so they can, in fact, pursue that. Barrett, Barrett is very worried about the media and politics. She actually is a very, very poor justice. And she says, hey, look, at least we got to nine. That's what the country needs to see, that we got to nine. I think the majority went too far. I can't agree with the, with the minority. But then again, I've become a rhino, a Washington insider, and that's how I think. She thinks she's new, the new Sandra Day O'Connor. But if you read the Constitution, the fact of the matter is, even the majority opinion seems to be somewhat of a compromise. This is a slam dunk case. Slam dunk. You can't have a person in Maine or a court in Colorado or a former traffic cop, excuse me, ticket judge in Illinois affecting a federal election like this. And even if you look at this situation as as a matter of insurrection, Donald Trump was not convicted of any insurrection. He wasn't charged with any insurrection, except in the Democrat House of Representatives and the Senate found President Trump not guilty. Nine to zero, that's a good day in that regard, but here's the problem. That same division, that same animosity, that same political partisanship, particularly by the three, is going to have a huge impact on the immunity decision. This was easy for John Roberts. It was easy for Kavanaugh. This was an easy one. It really was. It was low-hanging fruit, but even Barrett was incapable of handling it, and the three Democrats... Well, they want to protect the uh, the Biden administration, and they want to protect Raskin and their ilk. The majority said that's enough for shutting this crap down. But that division is there. That's what today showed me. That division is there. It's going to be there in the immunity case. It's going to be there in the potentially the obstruction case. People have raised the issue of using the Enron obstruction issue. And of course, it's going to be there should Donald Trump's lawyers, I hope they will, raise the issue of whether Jack Smith is constitutionally appointed or not. These are the big decisions. This was an easy one. And yet there was that division. There's way too much politics going on in this court by the leftists. Way too much. And their opinion reeks of politics. Their opinion reeks of anti-Trumpism. And Barrett said, can't we all get along? She's the Rodney King of the court. And so this will potentially, I would even go further, likely have an impact on a couple of these justices that voted among the nine who were appointed by Republicans. That is, this was an easy one. A little complicated for Barrett because she's really playing a different role, and that's how she views it. They're all looking for legacy. They're all reading the media. But it is possible. I'm not making predictions. I'm just telling you what I see. Of course, I could be wrong. But what I see from here, as I'm not inside the court, is that Roberts, potentially Kavanaugh, Barrett are going to be weak, particularly Roberts and Barrett when it comes to immunity and when it comes to some of these other issues. I just want you to be alerted to this because as I've said 
maybe for 10 years now, we live in a post-constitutional America. We can no longer rely on the virtue and prudence of many judges and justices. Not all, but many. So while everybody's celebrating this 9-0, to zero, I see some writing on the wall that I don't like. That concerns me. The kind of approach that some of these justices are going to bring to the job. And just remember, Jackson skyrocketed to the Supreme Court. She'd been a district judge. She skyrocketed to the Supreme Court. Just remember Sotomayor, next to Harry Blackman, is one of the dumbest justices in American history. And Kagan, of course, is a Clinton hack. A Clinton hack who never served one day on any court, and I don't even know if she ever litigated. A Harvard Law professor and the like. So this is my take. Some people have written in Nashville, this is a sloppy court decision. It's not a sloppy court decision. The court is broken into pieces right now. And the problem is the leftists on the court have no compunction about what they're doing whatsoever. And I love it when you have these people in the media today. You know, you cannot distinguish between so-called news people and people at The View or so forth. The media have so corrupted themselves and destroyed the entire profession that they see their job now is to do everything they can to destroy the credibility of the court. I'm telling you now what's going on in the court. You have this former federal judge, Michael Ludig, who's made a complete ass out of himself. Lawrence Tribe, who I don't think is even with it anymore, complete ass out of himself. And you have all these legal analysts who said, we have a shot at this and so forth. Buffoons. Absolute clowns. But it's worse than this. And I get credit where credit is due, and I've talked about this myself. These issues have come to the fore because of Jack Smith. These issues have come to the fore because of leftists who are litigating in state courts. These issues have come to the fore because of Democrat district attorneys and a Democrat attorney general in New York. The Supreme Court is busy because the Democrat Party is trying to litigate its way into the White House. Civilly, criminally, local, state, federal. That's what they're doing. They may succeed. I've told you now, I don't know how long, that the goal of Jack Smith and the others is to get a conviction on any count, just one count, so they can call Donald Trump a felon. Over and over again, they're trying to provide Joe Biden and the DNC and his campaign with commercials. Do you really want a felon as president and a felon and a jury found a felon and a felon? That's what they're doing. This is evil. These people are evil. They're mouthpieces in the media. They're evil. They don't care about the country. They're grifters. They're trying to create their own legacies. They're trying to demonstrate that they have influence. And they're all Democrats, every damn one of them. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Our once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation. For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched 
untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800-900-8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. The media want Donald Trump in prison. They can't get that. They want him convicted of a felony. They've already written the script. Rich Lowry at National Review is a good piece. You might have noticed the left didn't take it very well when the Supreme Court said it's going to hear Donald Trump's immunity case. The reaction was telling in all sorts of ways. It showed how conspiratorial-minded prominent left-wing commentators are and demonstrated how vested many of them in the hope that Jack Smith's January 6th case will make it impossible for Trump to win the presidency again. Perhaps most important, the firestorm was more evidence for how woefully misconceived Jack Smith's prosecution is. The lamentations and denunciations over the past few days have been remarkable, but we ain't seen nothing yet, whichever way Smith's case bounces. If Trump is convicted in the case and loses the election, Trump and his allies will have a ready-made argument that the election was rigged. That's, I've been making that point, by the way. Not that they'll have a ready-made argument, but that it was rigged. A Biden administration prosecutor rushed the case to trial on a political timetable to get the result of felony conviction that all the polling said will hurt Trump's prospects most. If there's no trial before the election and Trump wins, the left will have a ready-made argument that the election was illegitimate. The MAGA court did Trump's bidding by delaying the proceedings or ruling uh, in uh, the former president's favor on some question of law, the public was denied crucial information, and so forth. You see, that's not a legitimate position. Because they have created this legal scenario with the Biden administration. And they're demanding that the courts accommodate them. On the other hand, Donald Trump's playing defense. He can demand whatever he wants. He has to file, like anybody else, defenses, motions. But he says, Jack Smith, in short, is a delegitimizing machine. His prosecution is a stick of TNT in the middle of an already fraught election. I had mentioned this on Fox 2. And I think I came under attack by one of the usual Soros operations or something like that. Levin says that, you know, Biden, these prosecutors are creating a scenario. I certainly said it on radio, Mr. Producer, where the Democrats are going to say, uh, we don't accept the election results. And Republicans are going to legitimately say, we don't accept them if Trump loses, given what's taking place here. It's a historical. In their attacks on the Supreme Court in the past several days, left-wing opinion makers have said how worried they are that if the January 6th trial doesn't take place, justice as they see it won't be done. Trump could win the election again and order an end to the prosecution. But their fear that Trump might not be hobbled by the case as they hoped and expected adds an extra element to the outrage. Democrats in my text chains and a social media are equal parts enraged and despondent over the news, former Obama advisor Dan Pfeiffer wrote in his Substack newsletter of the Supreme Court's decision to take the case. Some worried Democrats comforted themselves by believing Trump's chances to return to the White House would end with a conviction. And what wasn't exactly breaking news, no trial before the election means no conviction. It's always been about interfering with the election. Always. They're out of the closet now. They're screaming it at the top of their lungs. They're saying, who gives a damn what you think? Who gives a damn about the system? Who gives a damn about the Biden administration interfering in the election and Biden and Obama judges interfering in the election? That's what we want because we've got to stop Hitler, don't you see? More when I return. Fellow patriots, America is now $34 trillion in debt, and it's climbing higher as we speak. This is not sustainable, and this debt could be putting every American's retirement at risk. You need to put a plan in place, and I know just the right people to help you. You should consider the top-rated gold company, Advantage Gold, to help you take steps to protect your wealth. They're hosting a free online investment seminar called the Gold and Silver Summit, where they will help you plan for what could be the worst recession of 
of our lifetime. This is serious, folks. You need a plan. And the amazing people at Advantage Gold can help. Just give them a call. It's painless. 800-900-8000. Sign up for this free online event. The number is easy. Just call 800-900-8000. Mention my name, Mark Levin, to claim exclusive bonuses. Call 800-900-8000. Get registered for this free online investment seminar right now. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. Mark Levin, the great one. The great one, Mark Levin. Dial in now, 877-381-3811. Now, here's a piece by Annie McCarthy, also National Review today. Now, I don't agree with everybody all the time, but these guys are saying things that I've said here because they're happening, because this is the reality. And it's not pleasant. Jumping Jack Flash, Prosecutor Smith, to light TNT stick in September. He says in this column, uh, let's see, uh, MAGA, Anthony goes on. Let me pick it up where it makes. Start planning for that stick to be lit in September, a little over a month before Election Day. A low-boil issue that we've discussed, he says, several times. I assume the courts would think it too unseemly to commence a trial of the Republican presidential nominee on the eve of the election. He said, I've second-guessed myself on that over the past few weeks, reasoning that there's no norm Democrats and their prosecutors are unwilling to bulldoze in their quest to get Trump convicted. And he's no fan of Trump's, by the way, but he's making the point. In accordance with the campaign calendar. Despite unambiguous Justice Department rules against election-driven prosecutorial maneuvers by which Smith is supposed to be bound. Hence, why should the vaunted 60-day rule, which is not even a rule, stand in their way? And sure enough, in pre-trial proceedings and Smith's other Trump prosecution, the Mar-a-Lago documents case, prosecutors announced, and this is yesterday, that the, or a Friday, that the Justice Department's make it up as you go along 60 day rule, the unwritten guidance that in the two months prior to an election, prosecutors should refrain from taking actions that might influence the outcome, does not apply in Trump's cases. I have shown you those memos on Fox. I've read them to you on the air here. Republican and Democrat attorneys general alike, including this current Democrat attorney general, which is a joke. They've said, stay the hell out of elections. Don't pull any triggers, certainly within 60 days of an election. Official attorney general memo. All of them. But Trump has already, say, argued, Trump has already been indicted, and everybody knows that. The trial of his case, the public parading of the witnesses and evidence against him, what prosecutors are hoping will be a jury verdict of guilty, couldn't possibly influence the election. Sure. He says, sure they can't, right? In other words, that's ridiculous. The glee from the media Democrat complex was manifest. At first, he said he thought, well, it remains to be seen whether the courts will allow themselves to be the puppet on the end of the Democrat string. But then as ever, he says, Trump's two clever by half lawyers undermine his position. Now, what is he talking about? Because the other day in Florida, when Smith came forward and said, we can start our case In June, or I guess it was July, uh, the response, and I was a little surprised by this, uh, July 8th, Trump's lawyer said, well, we can start it on August 12th. And so I thought, McCarthy thought on his own, now wait a minute, you're arguing that none of these cases should be held before the election. And he says, they did that. As a strategic move, they did it as a strategic move, but it was self-defeating. And he believes that's going to undermine their case with Chunkin, but we'll see. And that's the one they're passionate about, and he's right. The Klan Act, the ridiculous Enron Obstruction Act, and so forth. In an unusual move last night, the Supreme Court indicated it may announce some rulings this morning, and you know it did, 9-0. to zero. And it issued its decision, and we've just discussed that. But he says it follows the pace. In other words, the court hurried up and had to rule on the immunity case. That is, Trump's claim that he has immunity from prosecution on Smith's January 6th indictment, which the court has agreed to review. But it's a decision that could, end, that could land in late May. 
And if Trump loses, pretrial proceedings would resume and the trial itself might start, barring other hurdles, in late September. He says, that's the plan, boys and girls, a felony trial of Trump on the January 6th charges before a hostile Washington jury pool and an unfriendly Obama-appointed judge beginning after Labor Day and running through Election Day. That is the Biden campaign strategy. That's the Biden campaign strategy. It's also the Mark Elias campaign strategy. Remember him? He's the slip and fall. Ambulance chasing leftist lawyer who was involved in the Russia collusion matter, and he's going around the country trying to have the laws changed as he did the last presidential election who advantaged the Democrats. This is from the Federalist. I'm just putting all the pieces together for you so you don't have to. Left-wing election disruptor Mark Elias admitted Sunday that former President Donald Trump cannot get an impartial jury trial in Washington, D.C., The Biden Department of Justice is trying to throw Trump in jail on multiple charges, including charges related to his speech about the 2020 presidential election on January 6th. Elias, whose legal campaigns were often funded by left-wing billionaire George Soros, posted a screenshot on X, a.k.a. Twitter, of a headline announcing that former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley won her first primary of the 2024 election in the D.C. swamp. He posted this, in a city of 700,000, Donald Trump got 676 votes in the GOP primary. A tough jury pool, he commented. A tough jury pool? While Elias appeared to trying to make a political point about the Republican presidential primary, his post pointed out the constitutional concerns about trying Donald Trump in such a deep blue district. The Sixth Amendment requires that defendants receive an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed. But how is Trump going to receive a fair trial in Washington, D.C.? Elias just made the case. He just made the case. Trump's team has argued the former president will be unable to receive an impartial jury in a city where President Joe Biden received 92.1% of the vote, compared to Trump's 5.4%. That's like a, a Putin vote. In fact, the Supreme Court acknowledged in the 1971 case Grappi versus Wisconsin that there are some cases where only a change of venue is constitutionally sufficient to assure the kind of impartial jury required by both the Sixth and the Fourteenth Amendments. That's the Due Process Clause. And the court previously ruled in Raidu versus Louisiana that it was a denial of due process of law to refuse the request for a change of venue in that case. And that precedent was later applied to federal trials in Nebraska Press Association versus Stewart and the United States versus Fall, according to the University of Chicago Law Review. But it's not just the jury pool that might create an unfair trial for the former president. Judge Tanya Chunkin, who's overseeing the case, has appeared to bemoan the fact that Trump has so far escaped imprisonment. She told January 6 defendants during a 2021 sentencing hearing that, quote, the people who ex- exhorted you and encouraged you and, ra- and rallied you to go and take action and to fight have not been charged. Chunkin also said during sentencing for January 6th defendant Christine Priola that, quote, the people who mobbed the Capitol were there in fealty and loyalty to one man, not to the Constitution, of which most of the people who come before me woefully ignorant not to the ideas of this country, not to the principles of democracy. It's a blind loyalty to one person who, by the way, remains free to this day. That was Junkin. She refused to recuse herself. An Obama judge. So you have the radical leftist, Trump-hating Obama judge. You all have a jury that even the slip-and-fall, ambulance-chasing, low-life lawyer, Elias, says it's a tough jury pool as he's mocking it. Because he knows Trump will get convicted. Trump asked Trunkin to recuse herself from the case, a motion she herself then denied. This is a piece by Brianna Lyman. And she's doing a hell of a job over there at the Federalist. It's an excellent piece. So I pulled it together for you, at least most of it. And that's why there's no need for 
happy days are here again with this so-called nine to zero decision by the Supreme Court. There were nine votes against Colorado. There were five votes against the effort to use Section 3 of the 14th Amendment in ways it was never intended. There were three votes in which the three radical left Democrat justices said, no, just stop at Colorado and Maine and so forth. We'll leave it up to others to figure out the rest down the road. And then, of course, there's Barrett, who uh, who's a traffic cop, basically. This whole thing stinks. It's all stacked up against Trump. And that's why I've been saying year after year after year, because it's not just Trump. You've seen this coming. If you follow this program and listen, or watch me on television, or certainly read my books, we live in a post-constitutional America. That is exactly the case. And you're seeing it play out. And those three justices, in their opinions... The three radical leftists, it was a disgrace. It was an op-ed. It was an essay. And Barrett there, can't we all get along? It's it's just, uh, when you're facing a, a revolution like this, when you're facing an attack like this, we don't have time for traffic cops. When we come back, It's an amazing thing. It's a horrendous thing. What, Mark? That the people who have committed the most heinous, sickening, monstrous acts of terrorism have convinced the world that they're now the victims. Have convinced the world that they're now the victims. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Our once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation. For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800 900 8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800 900 8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professional. Do you know why the people in Gaza are without food? It's not because of the Israelis. If it wasn't for the Israelis, no food would be getting there. They build these areas where they're trying to get food to the Gazans. The Egyptians won't let them out. Hezbollah, excuse me, Hamas is stealing over 60% of all food and medicine that comes in. The International Red Cross is working with Hamas. The UN, so-called UNRWA, is working with Hamas. But you want to know the biggest reason why what's taking place in Gaza is taking place in Gaza? Because the overwhelming majority of the people in Gaza voted for Hamas. And according to two surveys, one done by an Arab organization, one done by a so-called Palestinian organization, almost 90% of the people in Gaza, as well as Judea and Samaria, the Palestinians, would vote for Hamas and support what Hamas did on October 7th. That's why what's happening to Gaza is happening. How many terrorist attacks was Israel supposed to withstand? Iran did this, Hamas did this, the Muslim Brotherhood did this, the Islamic Jihad did this, their leaders are 
protected. They're living as billionaires in Qatar and in Turkey. So Israel is supposed to just take it, but they're not going to just take it. Kamala Harris comes out demanding a ceasefire because she is a political... I can't say that, can I, Mr. Producer? She's a sleazeball. That's why. Just like the rest of them. The terrorist Palestinians did this to themselves. That is, Hamas and the rest of the groups. And the people there who gave them sanction, who gave them cover, who gave them support, they did this too. You cannot build a subway system, in essence, that's bigger than the New York subway system, the Philadelphia subway system, and any other substance system combined without the help of the citizenry. And they got the help of the citizenry. These Hamas leaders were not knocked off by some opposition group, by freedom fighters, by peaceful Palestinians. It's almost unanimous, 90%, almost 90%. That's pretty damn, well, it's as unanimous as you're going to get. And so now, the United States and Jordan are dropping food there. They're not dropping food in Syria where perhaps half a million Syrians have been slaughtered. They're not dropping food <clears throat> excuse me, in any other part of the Middle East or the rest of the world. They're not dropping food for the Uyghurs, two and a half million Muslims who are in concentration camps in communist China. The world is full of genocidal maniacs. They make up a supermajority of the United Nations members. And they make up the anti-Israel, anti-Jew, and I might add anti-America crowd. And so that's what's taking place. And so these people go on TV, they make these statements. Biden and the rest. And they make it seem like Israel's not trying to feed these people. Israel's got to stop. Israel's this. And so there's this piece that I encourage you to read in PJ Media by Rabbi Michael Barclay. The greatest trick evil has ever done is convince the world that it is the victim. So now the perpetrators and their supporters and their voters, they're the victims. You haven't heard that Israel's economy has shrunk by 25%, have you? You haven't heard what's happened to IDF soldiers over the last week, have you? You haven't heard that there's Well, what else can I say? The way for the Gazans to have lived in freedom and safety was to turn on the people they voted for rather than voting for them. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Well, it happened again. And to nobody better than Jake Tapper, the self-hating, Hamas-loving, phony journalist, Democrat, who was a spokes idiot for an idiot congresswoman for a year, and then he was a spokes idiot for a handgun control inc., Perfect resume, of course, for being a journalist. But there he was, Mr. Producer. Who was he interviewing? I forget. Oh, Nikki Haley. More on her in a moment. She's, he's interviewing Nikki Haley, and here's how it went. Go. Their official explanation was not they didn't like Donald Trump. They, they said he participated in an erection 
And I have to, in, in, in insurrection, sorry, in insurrection, and I have to say I got up at five this morning to do Casey Hunt's show and I'm exhausted. Oh, I'm sorry. You got up at five and you're exhausted and you mixed up erection with insurrection. Have you noticed the Democrats are always talking about, ins- about erections, Mr. Producer? And so we throw that on the bonfire of uh, mumblers. And uh, I-, I can't help it. Do we have that, Mr. Medusa? I, ca- I, can't, I can't help it, America. I can't. I got to play this at least once every two weeks. I know. It. Here we go. Go. What are they? Can it get a funny? Only the ghost They're all Democrats. The heaven. I. <clears throat> it calls when if you they just gave you gave them. Quit the the withdraw bringing U.S. home troops from home. And 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 the the the. Hey, no, you know. You know. What? You, know you, you 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 need somebody. Wait. So uh, what, finally. What? Of 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 un uh, of of budget about a budget. But resist, we much, we must, and we will much about that be committed. I, 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 I'm I'm a warrior. <laughs> um, you know the the that it was. The, hey, hey, did, 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 I mean, they, 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 they said that. Look, the 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 yeah. The, well, I was a strip. Was it him? Why? I I I didn't. If we if we you know it it you know it it we can walk and chew gum. We all these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by go. You know the you know the thing. True international average of pressure. Been impeached for inciting the erection. Donald John Donald John Trump incited the erection insurrection. And what am I doing here? I'm going to lose track here. And uh, to confidence in the integrity. Private, uh, private uh, 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 economic. Uh, no, 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 no. Don't let, let them. You know how much I'm going to do with the deficit this year? Bridges and those bonds that are collapsing. And, you know, it is, it is, um, it is, you know, it is not, uh, it is a, it is. Happy birthday, dear Valley. Part of the, um, the, um, uh, Mr. The, the, uh, the, sen- uh, the, the, I don't do some of you to some of the leadership of, um, the, every, that, well, Kajan, Kajan, Katanji drowned Jackson. You docs are good, but there's any angels in heaven, they're all nurses, male and female. God save the queen, man. President Trump incited an erection. Uh, an, an Mess with the men on the Beer brewed here. <laughs> it is used to make the brew beer. <laughs> it is oh, Earth Rider, thanks for the Great Lakes. I wonder why. <laughs> Participated in an erection. These are the people who want to rule over us. But we're not done. We have a montage, thanks to our brothers and sisters at Newsbusters of the media whining about the SCOTUS decision. They're very upset. That would be cut six, go. We've learned that it was a nine to nothing decision ruling that Donald Trump can be on the ballot in Colorado and other states. I'm not confident that that will produce a result that's good for American democracy. This is actually what I had been concerned about. I had been concerned that it should it go to the Supreme Court, they would rule this way. I'd laugh if it weren't so sad. My next guest says Donald Trump is still an oath breaking insurrectionist. Do you have confidence in the Supreme Court? Do you think this court is partisan? The court itself may have overstepped. The court went way further than it needed to go. Our colleague Melissa Murray has called this Supreme Court the YOLO court. The criticism of the court is that they're playing interference. Not since Bush v. Gore have we seen a court that has had this many opportunities to interfere in the election. The headline here is this, that this is a unanimous ruling, but if you scratch the surface just a little, this is a five to four ruling on part of it. This is actually a five to four decision. It's five to for. Trump will take this, spin it, spread the misinformation, disinformation on it. So it's a win for them. He, he's on the ballot and voters will vote. And he, and he looks like he's headed to become the Republican nominee for president. You can't save the people from themselves. 
If they're determined to reelect him after he organized that insurrection, then there's nothing to stop the people from doing that. Boy, did, boy, do these people hate you. They are using the law to reach into the Republican primary process with the outspoken support of the Nikki Haley's of the world to try and destroy the Republican nominee for president. Now, one of the things that they're not talking about at National View and elsewhere is this. What if that trial does take place in September and works its way through the election? And what if there is a conviction, even on one count? Or even in New York? What then? What then will happen? Now, I can tell you that, yes, Donald Trump could still be president of the United States, but that's not my point. Even if he wins most of the Electoral College votes, the Congress has the final say. It's something I've been saying over and over and over again. That's why the intervention of the criminal justice system in the past presidential election up to this point is outrageous because Congress's will in the end is the determining factor. It's not supposed to be a grand jury unelected, a judge unelected, a prosecutor appointed unelected. All these unelected people, a relative handful of people making these decisions for Republicans and the nation in a general election, it's not the way it's ever supposed to work. And to show you how weak the case is for the four billionth time, look at what they're charging Trump with. On January 6th. They keep talking about an insurrection. They don't have an insurrection. They have an erection. And I bet most of them don't even have that, Mr. Producer. Although, in Russia, the men are men and the women are men. So, who, know, who knows? Maybe it's in the Democrat Party the same thing. They cer- certainly seem inclined toward that. But that's a whole other story. So now the Supreme Court's the enemy. The judge in Florida is the enemy. They have to be ruined. They have to be smeared. They have to be attacked by people in newsrooms who don't know a damn thing about a damn thing, but are partisan. Now, the media, CNN and MSNBC and the Sunday shows are obsessed with Jamie Raskin. Why? Number one, he's a Marxist. His daddy was a Russia-loving Marxist. This is well documented. Number two... He hates the men who wrote and ratified the Constitution. So he rejects the Constitution, except when he doesn't. He's such a coward, this bastard, that he won't come on my program. Because I want to eviscerate his ass, but he won't come on the program. We've tried how many times, Mr. Producer? Half a dozen, maybe? At least. Coward. Punk. Hear that, pal? You're a punk. He's not a constitutional scholar. He's a constitutional arsonist. But he's also an election denier. He's one of the leaders who tried to prevent Donald Trump's presidency in 2016 on the floor of the House. He also tried to prevent George H.W. Bush's presidency on the floor of the House. I wish the rhinos would remember that. And, of course, he will do anything humanly possible to prevent Donald Trump from ever going into the Oval Office, even if Donald Trump is elected. And it's going to be a tough row, ladies and gentlemen. All these lawsuits, all these judicial decisions, uh, all the changing of the voting systems. That's why I keep warning you. Please don't sit on your laurels watching these, these polls. I hope they're right. But they may not be. And we know polls haven't been right before. But but the polls don't poll. Is the fraud. Is all the massive free media time. And all the rest of it. Here's Jamie Raskin on CNN today. Why is he on CNN? Because CNN wants to promote what he has to say. That's why. Cut five. Go. The Supreme Court punted and said it's up to Congress to act. And so. The Supreme Court didn't punt. I mean the Supreme Court punted. So even the three justices 
whose opinions were preposterous, but wound up voting with a nine on the essential issue. Uh, They punted too. Everybody punts, but Mr. Raskin is a Marxist. So they punted too, because none of them are radical enough for Raskin, but that's why he's on CNN, you see. Go ahead. Um, I am working with a number of my colleagues, including uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Eric Swalwell, to revive legislation that we had to set up a process by which we could determine that someone uh, who committed insurrection is... So this man is a believer in the French Revolution, not the American Revolution, where they set up similar committees to see if certain people had had enough fidelity toward the revolution, the French revolutionaries. And almost all the time, they found that they did not. And they would go in front of this commission or this committee, this phony tribunal. They would rule very quickly, and they would be immediately sent to the guillotine. People used to talk about the French Revolution. You can hear the guillotines going morning, noon, and night. And they were. There was terrorism in the street for 10 years. That's Jamie Raskin. He hates the founders. He hates the framers. He hates the Declaration. He hates the Constitution. He hates our country. He hates you. He doesn't believe the Republicans should have any nominee that they don't approve of, that the Democrat Party doesn't approve of. That's the bottom line, and they approve of Nikki Haley, and Nikki Haley's moving more and more toward the insanity that is the Democrat Party. Go ahead. Fight by Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And the House of Representatives already impeached Donald Trump for participating in insurrection uh, by inciting it. So the House has already pronounced upon that. See, ladies and gentlemen, there's a new House... Even though it's a small majority, it's now the Republicans. This House is not bound by the former House. Mr. Constitutional Scholar knows that, but he's a liar and he doesn't give a damn. That's why he won't come on the show. I can I could rip this punk to shreds. And of course, the Senate, which he doesn't uh, mention, ruled that uh, Donald Trump is innocent. And even think of that trial. Well, Donald Trump was out of office. The Senate was holding a trial. I don't ever remember that happening either. And now the Senate's saying, in the case of Mayorkas, I don't think we're going to take up that case. They are destroying our country. Once again, backbenchers, you can repeat it. I give you permission. We're in a post-constitutional America. The country's dying. And there's going to be one Republican nominee... Only one, and he's the only one that can help take even baby steps towards trying to save us. You want to know the real reason they hate Donald Trump? I mean, hate him. They would love to see him hanging from a telephone pole, and I'm serious about that. It's because their dear Hillary was supposed to have Obama's third term and finish off the revolution with eight more years so we could never, ever unravel what they've done. And there comes Donald Trump. They viewed him, oh, he's a great guy, he's a billionaire, he's very popular, and then he becomes a Republican, he defeats Hillary. Now he's stupid, he's a racist, he's a this, he's a that. They used to love him, took pictures with him, took his money, wanted his endorsement. And now look. Because he stood in the way of the revolution, knowingly or not, wittingly or not, he stood in the way of this revolution that was launched by Barack Obama. And he threatens to stand in the way again. This is why Raskin, above all others, a Marxist, whose daddy was a Marxist, whose daddy was a defender of the Soviet Union, even under Stalin. Oh, we deny that. Deny whatever the hell you want. The fact of the matter is, this is why that guy's out front. This is why they all want to stop Trump. It's not because of what he says. It's not because they think he's going to be a dictator. It's not because of January 6th. Because they're in a revolution to forever change America. That's why the border is open. That's why the military has been weakened. That's why we have crime in the streets to overthrow the civil society. That's why we have propagandists in the media, demagogues, propagandists, Democrats, Marxists, Islamists. 
These people aren't patriotic. They don't embrace our country. They don't embrace our founding. They lie. That's what they do for a living. We're supposed to have a free press. Why? To protect the reporters? No. To protect us. To protect, to protect this republic. A press that will hold powerful government officials to account. Not serve as their puppets to the master. And yet that's what we have. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick-charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. You know, there's an editor over there at Newsweek, a uh, Newsweek editor. Her name, I'm about to give you, and she's a pretty sharp lady, is, let's see, I had it tip of my tongue, Unger Sargon, U-N-G-A-R dash S-A-R-G-O-N. She made a brilliant point, and there aren't many brilliant points being made out there on the Bill Maher show. She said the reason why there was a significant vote for nobody in Michigan among Democrats wasn't because of the Arabs and the Muslims, although there was that. It's because of the blue-collar labor union members, like the auto workers. She said, Joe Biden is losing blue-collar, blue-collar Democrats because of the open border, because of his immigration stance, because of his electric vehicle stance, and so forth and so on. She said, Michigan is a... You know, it's an auto worker state in many respects. And there's a lot more auto workers in Michigan than there are Arab slash Muslims per se. And she said he may well be losing that vote, no question. He said, but his bigger problem is he's losing blue collar workers, and he's losing blue collar workers not just in Michigan, but all over the country. Because blue collar workers are not into government run economic systems that put them out of work or create very unstable long-term employment circumstances. That, she said, is what's happened in Michigan, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Pure Talk believes in American values, and that free should mean exactly that, free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. In a world of pathetic liberal potholes, he's a truck full of hot constitutional asphalt. Mark Levin. Call him now at 877-381-3811. Let me expand on what Ungar Sargon of Newsweek said, because it's very solid here. She says, I think 
that the media really, really want to put this narrative out there that Biden is going to lose Michigan over Gaza when the truth is he's going to lose Michigan over 600,000 auto workers because his EV market was extremely punishing to auto workers. Have you noticed that, America? The report's coming out. I have to read a ton every day uh, of how these vehicles are more damaging to the environment than the combustion engine. That when they catch on fire, they actually spew toxic pollution. That it is extremely difficult for firefighters and other rescue personnel to deal with these vehicles when they're in crashes and life threatening situations that you the American people you don't want these damn vehicles and so the dealerships can't sell them they're overwhelmed with them despite the government subsidies and this is going to have a direct effect on auto workers around the country because at some point what are they going to make you know when you change an assembly line from combustion to electric that is the the uh, vehicles it's not so simple It takes time. She said on Bill Maher's show, there's been this big realignment where working class Americans are very, very, very much on the Trump train. People who used to be Democrats and used to vote for Democrats and rather than admit that, this outrage that Democrats lost the working class vote and try to figure out how we can appeal to them again. They're looking for excuses and other things to blame, like this war in Gaza. Or they'll call them deplorables. Or they'll call them racist, you know, because they don't want to admit that Trump has picked up a lot of the policies that used to be Democrat policies in the 90s, like controlling the border, for example. The idea that an open border and mass migration is extremely punishing to the working class. It drives down their wages. It's class warfare against the working class. It's an upward transfer of wealth from the working class who end up competing with immigrants to the elites who end up employing them. And now they can employ cheap Labor immigrants, instead of having to pay working class Americans a living wage. Her name is Batya, B A T Y A, Batya Ungar Sargon. I don't know anything about her, but she sounds right on. She sounds great. And I want to add on to this the percentage of people in this country who are Arab slash Muslim is very, very small. It's smaller than the percentage of Jews, at least for now. I'm sure that'll change soon. But nonetheless, does it sound that way in the media? Does it sound that way in our streets? Does it sound that way in our academia, in our culture? No, because they have a massive influence, a massive influence where numbers don't matter, where influence matters, where who you know matters, where how you work your way into the system matters, exactly what the communist Gramsci, the Italian communist, said that communists need to do, but in this case, Islamists as well. They are bankrolled by billions of dollars from Qatar. And this is what's going on in this country. It's a tiny percentage, but getting bigger fast. And I believe she's right. 600,000 auto workers in Michigan far outnumber the number of Arabs and Muslims in Michigan, even though you have Dearbornistan and places like that. And they're the ones that Biden has to worry about. But he's still going to try and cobble together this. These groupings, you know, like Franklin, I talked about this the other night, Franklin Roosevelt. His path to victory was putting people into categories And then grouping them together is the base of the Democrat Party. It wasn't about Americanism. and No, no. It's about this group and that group. That's been the Democrat Party, really, for a century. Or at least 85, 90 years. And so they've cobbled together these groups now. They just figure they have enough of the Jewish vote. We'll see. That they can just take it for granted. Plus you have billionaires like Saban out in California, an Israeli Jew who's more than happy to raise tens of millions of dollars for Biden. This is another self-hater, in my humble opinion. And on top of that, they cobble together labor. Now, the big labor bosses, for the most part, are Democrat all the way because they're more Democrat party than they are really union guys. I'm just saying the truth. Well, I worked my way up from the right. Yeah, but you sold out your members. And I speak of labor unions in the private sector differently than I do, say, the teachers' unions, 
which are hardcore Marxist leftists, 35 percent of their members are not. But they have no say in the union either. How do I know? They tell me all the time. What about the cops and the firefighters? What about them? Trust me, they need protection. And I'm all for it. Because they come under attack by these Marxist friggin' mayors and city councils. By these phony civil rights front groups. Their necks are on the line. I'm fine with it. What do you think of that? I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about paper pushers. I'm talking about the teachers unions. SEIU. Another Marxist operation. The men and women who work with their hands and are brilliant to boot in the private sector unions, that's who I'm talking about. I think they've had about enough of Biden, at least enough of them have, and that's where he's starting to bleed. That's how Reagan won massive landslides. Moderate Democrats. Blue-collar Democrats came over and voted for him. Twice. Massive numbers. And I hope that happens this time, for God's sakes. I truly do. But this, uh, this individual really was uh, Batya Ungar Sargon. I honestly never heard of her before. But now you've heard of her, and I've heard of her. And we've got to learn more about her, Mr. Benuzzi, as far as I'm concerned. Just so much to cover. Sometimes... Uh, You just have to drop certain issues and focus on others. Tell me, what is the difference between Dana Bash on CNN and Sonny Hostin on The View? None. There isn't any difference. So let's let's place uh, Neil Cattell, the former acting solicitor general of the United States. What's the difference between him and Joy Behar? There's no difference. No difference whatsoever. And that's the problem with our media today. It's a joke. Now, Nikki Haley's a joke, too. You people voting on Super Tuesday, by my calculation, it's tomorrow. It's really important to defeat her and defeat her badly. She's not some great hope. She's not some moderate. She's not. I love the way they, they spin the polls now. I'm the only one not relying on any poll. We got to fight like we're behind and fight like hell. And, you know... She says, well, if you look at the polls and her media say, she beats Biden by a bigger number than Trump. This woman has not been vetted. She's not faced the wrath of the Democrats. The media are behind her. The Democrat billionaires are behind her. She hasn't been scrutinized at all. At all. And I don't think she could hold up. There's no way she could hold up. Now, she... First said she won't run for president if Trump does, so she lied. Then she gets in and she says, look, I'm not going to attack Trump. I'm going to run on the issues. Then she lied. Then she said she's the Reagan-like Republic, Republican until she got all the support from the Democrats and the leftists. She lied. She told the RNC as a condition of being in the debate that she would support the eventual Republican nominee, now she says, no, I don't think so. She lied. She's a liar. She's lied about China. She's lied about Disney. She's lied about Palestinian migrants. She's lied about her tax record. She's a liar. But it's okay. Because she's out there to get Trump. The Democrats don't view Nikki Haley as a problem, or they wouldn't be funding her. She's a useful idiot to them and a useless idiot to us. Here she is on Meet the Depress with Kristen Welker. Cut 17, go. You did sign a pledge, an RNC pledge, yeah. to support the eventual nominee. Do you still feel bound by that pledge? I have always said that I have serious concerns about Donald Trump. I have even more concerns about Joe Biden. Now, so that no? Actually, you, you did say you always had the serious con- You notice that lisping now, Mr. Producer? No, actually, you didn't say that. I have the audio as well as the video where you said you would support him. You didn't say I've always had serious concerns. God, what a... 
nasty piece of work. Good God. Go ahead. The RNC pledge. The RNC pledge, I mean, at the time of the debate, we had to take it to where would you support the nominee? And you had to, in order to get on that debate stage, you said yes. The RNC is now not the same RNC. Now it's... Oh, everybody's changed but Nikki. She made a pledge, but it's not the same RNC. You know, it's... it's, Now Trump's daughter-in-law runs it. So it's not the same RNC. By the way, when Ronald Reagan became the nominee, he took over the RNC. He pushed out the Ford Bush supporters at the RNC and he put his own people in place. There's nothing new with that. In fact, you'd have to be out of your mind not to do that if you're going to be the Republican nominee or are the Republican nominee. So that, there's nothing new with that, just so you know. But look, I thought that pledge was the, under the old RNC, not the new RNC. Go ahead. So we're bound by that pledge. No, I think I'll make what decision I want to make, but that's not... Oh, there you go, America. So you can't trust her either. Because she doesn't believe what she says. It it all has an expiration date on it, like like a bottle of milk. Now she's going to lecture you, like Hillary Clinton, who she said actually got her into politics. She's so enamored and admired Hillary. Did you know that? Yes, that's true, too. Cut 18, go. Based on what you're saying, Ambassador, are you prepared to stay in this through the convention? Is that your plan? If the people want to see me go forward, they'll show it. They'll show it in their votes. They'll show it in their donations. They'll show it in the fact that they want us to continue to go forward. This is about really trying to get everyone to realize that this primary isn't between Donald Trump and Nikki Haley. Oh, tell us. Who is it between? If it's not yet. Ooh. Go ahead. That's what you see. This primary is what is the direction of the Republican Party? Are we going to go where you had Donald Trump? He grew government. He didn't reduce the size. You know, ladies and gentlemen, every Republican president has grown the government because we haven't figured out how to stop it. So that's really another cheap shot. She grew the government in South Carolina. She hasn't given out a single list of things that she would cut. She's got nothing substantive to run on. Zero. Zero. She doesn't attack the liberals in her own party who grow government left and right. Notice she doesn't attack Collins, who just endorsed her. She doesn't attack Murkowski, who just endorsed her. These are, or Romney. These are the biggest spenders the Republican Party has. And yet, they're backing her. But she's going to make sure the government doesn't grow. How many more lies is Nikki going to tell and get away with? Nikki, you've been invited on this show, too. And now you're hiding. Are you hiding with Mr. Raskin? You're hiding with Bernie Sanders? I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Pure Talk believes in American values and that free should mean exactly that. Free. Switch to Pure Talk today and get a free Samsung 5G smartphone. No four-line requirement, no activation fees, just a Samsung that's built to last with a rugged screen, quick charging battery, and top-tier data security. Qualifying plans start at just 35 bucks a month for unlimited talk, text, 15 gigs of data, and mobile hotspot. Pure Talk will connect you to the most dependable 5G network in America for half the price of Verizon, AT&T, or T-Mobile. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year. So let Pure Talk's expert U.S. customer service team help you make the switch today. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, L-E-V-I-N, and claim your eligibility for your free, brand new Samsung 5G smartphone and start saving on wireless today. Again, go to puretalk.com slash Levin to switch to my cell phone company, Pure Talk. Nikki Haley, a meet the depressed. I don't know if Trump would follow the Constitution if elected to a second. So she's basically a uh, a mouthpiece for the Democrats. That's what she is. She's a mouthpiece for the Democrat Party. She's saying the same things they say. Oh, Nikki. Oh, if we only had you as the nominee, Nikki. 
she tries 2028, she'll have to come through the rest of us. We patriotic constitutionalists, no way, no way, no way. Her conduct has been reprehensible. The things coming out of her mouth, even worse. Postmillennial.com about Joe Biden's speech at the State of the Union. You're going to hate it. You're going to hate it because he's going to attack you. He's going to say what he always says. He's going to be his racist self. He's going to attack millions and millions of America, trying to portray them as Nazis, trying to portray Trump as a Nazi, because that's all this guy's got. He's got nothing else but fear and fear itself. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello America, Mark Levin here, our number 877 877-381-3811. You know, Donald Trump spoke today wasn't covered by much of the media. Instead, they want to hear from Jamie Raskin and Nikki Haley. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that truly amazing? Joe Biden can shuffle in the never-never land, spew his gibberish. They'll cover it beginning to end. Then they'll tell you how brilliant he is. He's the Einstein of our era. And uh, Donald Trump, who's the subject of all these attacks and so forth, endless opinions. But when he speaks, they don't want to cover it. So I'll cover it somewhat, having played the reprobates. Here's the president today after the SCOTUS decision was released, that is the Supreme Court. Cut one, go. The Supreme Court, for its unanimous decision today, it was a very important decision, were very well crafted, and I think it will go a long way toward bringing our country together, which our country needs. And uh, they worked long, they worked hard, and frankly, they worked very quickly on something that will be spoken about 100 years from now and 200 years from now, extremely important. Essentially, you cannot take somebody out of a race because an opponent would like to have it that way. And it has nothing to do with the fact that it's the leading candidate, whether it was the leading candidate or a candidate that was well down on the totem pole, you cannot take somebody out of a race. The voters can take the person out of the race very quickly, but a court shouldn't be doing that, and the Supreme Court saw that very well. And I really do believe that will be a unifying factor, because while most uh, states were thrilled to have me, you know, there were some that didn't, and they didn't want that for political reasons. They didn't want that because of poll numbers, because the poll numbers are very good. We're uh, beating President Biden in almost every poll. New York Times came out yesterday with a very big a poll for us. So they uh, they didn't like that. And you can't do that. You can't do what they tried to do. And hopefully Colorado, as an example, will unify. I know there's tremendous support. They've they brought our support up very strong in Colorado because people thought people in Colorado thought that was a terrible thing that they did. Mm hmm. Cut to go. I will say that President Biden, number one, stop weaponization. Fight your fight yourself. Don't use prosecutors and judges to go after your opponent, to try and damage your opponent so you can win an election. Our country is much bigger than that. Mm-hmm. He's saying very, very important things, but they don't want you to hear them. Cut three, go. And while we're on the subject, and another thing that will be coming up very soon will be immunity for a president, and not immunity for me, but for any president. If a president doesn't have full immunity, you really don't have a president because nobody that is serving in that office will have the courage to make, in many cases, what would be the right decision, or it could be the wrong decision. It could be, in some cases, the wrong decision, but they have to make decisions, and they have to make them free of all terror that can be rained upon them when they leave office or even before they leave office. And some decisions are very tough. I can tell you that as a president that some decisions to make are very tough. I took out ISIS and I took out some very big 
people from the standpoint of a different part of the world. Uh, two of the leading terrorists, probably the two leading terrorists ever that we've ever seen in this world. And uh, those are big decisions. I don't want to be prosecuted for it. Uh, another president wouldn't want to be prosecuted for it. It had a tremendously positive impact. It stopped everything cold. And sometimes you have to make those. They were tough decisions. Sometimes you have to make decisions like that. When you make a decision, you don't want to have your opposing party or opponent or even somebody that just thinks you're wrong bring a criminal suit against you or any kind of a suit when you leave office. I have that right now at a level that nobody's ever seen before. I have rogue prosecutors and I have rogue judges. I have judges that are out of control. And it's a very unfair thing for me, but um, serving perhaps as a uh, sample to others of what should not be happening. Sounds incredible to me. Does he sound like Joe Biden to you, number one, in the way he speaks? Of course not. He doesn't even have notes. But the media would have you believe that he's worse than Biden. But the media, of course. The American media are a media that's better fit for a third world despot or banana republic or a genocidal regime in China or Russia or an Islamist terrorist regime in the Middle East because that's, they, they, they have the same habits, uh, they have the same desires in the sense of an all-powerful centralized state, and uh, that is their mindset. That's who they are. And that attack on October 7th was the final nail on any credibility the American media have because now the terrorists are, are the victims. The people who voted for the terrorists They're the victims. The people who vote for the terrorists in a blink of an eye again, they're the victims. And the Jews defending themselves, they're the perpetrators. That's your Democrat Party. One more on Donald Trump, please. Cut four. Go. I'm being prosecuted by Biden, my opponent, because every one of these things, whether it's Fannie Willis or Bragg, these are local and state, but they're in total coordination with the White House. You can't do that. It shouldn't be done. done. I mean, a thing like that, uh, in the case of the DA's office, they put one of the top people, maybe the second person, in the Manhattan DA's office to get Trump. They had a Hillary Clinton lawyer leave the law firm, very prestigious, big law firm, leave the law firm to go into the DA's office to get Trump, Pomerantz, Mr. Pomerantz. This is, by the way, this is all true. All of it, every word of it. And of course, these people aren't being pursued to have ethics complaints filed against them and be disbarred. No, that only happens to lawyers who represent Trump. Go ahead. Worked for the Democrat Party and Hillary Clinton, goes in to prosecute Donald Trump at a local level in total coordination with the Department of Justice, meaning Biden. And then you have the Fannie Willis, or as she would say, Fannie, Fannie, F-A-N-I, but Fannie. And she hired somebody, knew the person long before this horrible prosecution took place. And she went out and she paid him an unbelievable amount of money, more money than he ever had dreamt possible much more money than other people that are that do that for a living he never did it at all had no experience in it at all and they had obviously a conflict we don't have to go into that but they were able to get a lot of money because it was a high profile person me i'm a very high profile person so they were able to pay him close to a million dollars when he was not equipped to do the job and she's not equipped to do the job and that case should end immediately that case is so conflicted nobody's ever seen anything Mm -hmm. No question about that. We'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Christiana Amanpour. You ever hear of her? She's been around a long time. Typically CNN, CNN International. She's very anti-Israel, very anti-American in my humble opinion. 
Our buddy Tim Graham over at Newsbusters, one of the great sites, he says the far-left website, The Intercept, was very excited last Friday about CNN being accused in an internal meeting. Ready for this one? This is laughable. Of having a, quote, pronounced pro-Israel bias, CNN. So in other words, unless you support the extermination of the Jews in Israel, you have a pro-Israel bias. Actual pro-Israel media watchdogs like Camera, we've had them on, they're very important, would disagree. The headline, an internal meeting, Christiana Ampor confronts CNN brass about, quote, double standards, unquote, on Israel coverage. I told you, she's an Israel hater. Amon Poor expressed real distress over Israel's stories being changed while other staffers described a climate that is hostile to Arab journalists. Aren't you folks sick and tired of this? Aren't you sick and tired of this? What is an Arab journalist? Do we have Irish journalists? Do we have Italian journalists? Do we have Jewish journalists? Do we have German journalists? What the hell is an Arab journalist? Doesn't this underscore the problem? The lack of assimilation? The lack of e pluribus unum? From many one? Yes, it does. So now the Arab journalists are unhappy with the hostile climate at the CNN news site, which is about as anti-Israel as it gets. I mean, I know it's not Al Jazeera, but it's close. So the Arab journalists are upset. Oh, woe woe is me and woe are they. I'm sorry. You're upset? I'm sorry. What would you like us to report? In an hour-long meeting when CNS boss Mark Thompson and other executives in the London Bureau on February 13, quote, staffers took turns questioning a panel of executives about CNN's protocols for covering the war in Gaza. And what they describe as a hostile climate for Arab reporters. Oh, it's very hostile. Might even be Islamophobic if they're Muslim. They complain about CNN routing almost all coverage relating to Israel and Palestine through the network's Jerusalem Bureau, which is dubbed Second Eyes. Christiane and Poor lined up with the Arabs. No way. You've heard from me. You've heard from my, you know, my... My real distress with second eyes, changing copy, double standards, all the rest. She was identified in the recording when an executive called her name. So you've heard it, and I hear what your response is, and I hope it does go a long way. So the Hamas wing of CNN is is on the move. They don't think CNN has gone far enough trashing the Jews. I mean, they have their self-haters there. But it's not enough. A half dozen staffers, quote, spoke candidly on how the allegedly pro-Israel coverage, that's right, pro-Israel coverage at the CNN International Bureau in London. It would be funny if it wasn't so pathetic. They weakened the network's standing in the region and made Arab staffers feel like their lives are expendable. Expendable. I was in southern Lebanon during October, November, one journalist said, and it was more distressing to me to turn on CNN than the bombs falling nearby. Because they weren't falling on your head, you a-hole. But listen to this crap. The journalist posed a question to the executives. I want to ask as well, what have you done and what are you doing to address the hate speech that fills our air and informed our coverage, especially in the first few months of the war? That's right, hate speech against terrorists and Hamas and Iran and Hezbollah and the Houthis. Can't have that. Well, they defend the terrorists. Newsbuster says the Arab tilde is so pronounced that they complain that people expected them to denounce Hamas. Horrors. What next? Say negative things about Hezbollah? Are we headed toward Zionism is racism? Asked Tim Graham over at the Newsbusters. A reporter's angry. They have to include any Israeli point of view. Usually journalists are upset when there's an attempt to balance out the pro-Hamas position. You see? I think I'm kidding when I say the pro-Hamas wing of the media, the pro-Hamas wing of the Democrat Party. Show me the pro-Hamas wing of the Republican Party. Where is it? Where is it? There is none. There aren't any, I should say. Or there are none. Get your English right. 
at CNN. And this is all being stoked by groups like CARE, CARE International, Hamas, Soros, all the haters. It's all being pushed. It's a tiny, tiny percentage of America. And yet the media are special pleaders for the Arab terrorists. But they're not the only ones. You ever hear this guy, Benny Gantz, G-A-N-T-Z? He's in the war cabinet in Israel because he was invited there by Netanyahu, the public there. The voters voted him and his coalition out of office. Him, Lapid, and Bennett. Under whose watch the Hamas intelligence information was squelched. It's under him and them. But Benny Gantz is a retired general, and most of the generals there, not all, all want to be prime minister. It's the weirdest damn thing. Benny Gantz is a failure. Benny Gantz did not get what he wanted. He didn't get elected prime minister. He couldn't put a coalition together. Netanyahu is trying to build a unified cabinet, like Lincoln did during the Civil War, a unified cabinet to fight the enemy. And guess what happened today, America? The Biden administration invited Mr. Gantz to come to Washington, D.C. The Prime Minister of Israel is the head of government there. Mr. Gantz said yes without the approval of the Prime Minister. In fact, Mr. Gantz not only met with Kamala Harris, who today went out and smeared Israel, but he's going to meet with Democrat leaders, apparently some Republican leaders, I don't know who that would be, Maybe Thomas Massey or somebody like that. He's going out there and he's going to meet with APAC, which is a useless organization that's always walking the high wire and mostly Democrat, but they pretend to be bipartisan. Yeah, this is the time to be bipartisan. With the Hamasis over there in the Democrat Party. So Gantz is the Benedict Arnold of, of Israel. And Biden is trying to destroy that coalition government. He's invited into the government, even though he has no elected role whatsoever. And then he comes to the United States at the request of Biden, meets with the vice presidents, meeting with the secretary of state, the traitor Blinken, meeting with Sullivan. Remember him in the 51 letter? In the re- anyway, Sullivan. Meeting with all the reprobates in the Democrat Party and Democrat power positions. Then, he's going to be doing diplomacy and so for the Washington, D.C. What would it be like, ladies and gentlemen, if we had a cabinet secretary? Israel said, you know, we're not talking to Biden. We're going to talk to a cabinet secretary who we think is going to be friendly to us. How do you think that would fly in the United States? So let me ask you this. If Joe Biden isn't an anti-Semite, then what is he? I don't care what the Hamas Nazi wing of the Democrat Party has to say. I don't care what they have to say in Dearbornio, Michigan, or whatever it's called, Dearbornistan. I don't care. When you listen to the imams there, many of them, and the people there, you wouldn't care either. Hate-filled contempt for this country and for Jews. It's disgusting. And there he is, Biden. Biden, he attacks Menachem Begin, 1992, he attacks Netanyahu. He's done more to undermine Israel during war than anybody. Anybody. Either Hamas. He's trying to topple that government. What would happen if Netanyahu said to a cabinet, sir, I want to meet with you and no, Biden's not allowed to be involved. Biden doesn't do that to any other people or any other country on the face of the earth. I'll be right back. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877-381-3811. Let's go to Justice, San- Justice. Justin, San Diego, Sirius Satellite, go right ahead, please. Oh, the great one, Mr. Levin. It's good to speak with you. Thank you. I, uh, I wanted to get you on the record and ask you a question. Oh. Do you think that people who have dual citizenship should be members of Congress. Should All right, let's get are... rid of this guy. He snuck through the call screener. 
that's the Jewish thing, that I have dual citizenship. In other words, I'm an Israeli firster, an American seconder. That's what that means. I don't have dual citizenship. I'm an American citizen. I'll never have dual citizenship. I don't know what he's calling me. But I get this all the time from the anti-Semites. Ooh, Mark, you a dual citizen. No, no, no. But most of these people don't even support America. But I get it. I get it from the Hamas wing. I get it from the Klansmen. I get it, I get it, I get it. We'll move on. Let's go to Brett, Arlington, Texas, the great WBAP. Go. Wow, I'm so flattered you took my call. I just wanted to comment. Do you have dual citizenship, the- Brett? I'm just curious. No, sir. Uh, just checking on you. I don't All right, know. thank That's you, over, buddy. Over my head. Yeah, mine too. I wanted to Go comment right that the, I wanted to comment that the Democratic Party is trying to burn down the executive branch. Um, you know, Trump said in his speech uh, that if you're going to uh, prosecute a president for decisions that he's made during his presidency, the presidency will just be impotent the democrat party has no use for the for the executive branch let me let me alter that slightly from my perspective anyway the democrat party is about uh, situational ethics morality many maybe a couple decades ago i wrote an entire piece on this at national review called situational ethics in fact i wrote two pieces on it There are other people on TV and radio who have, of course, plagiarized that line. But I've called it situational ethics. And that's what you see here. And so they want to destroy the executive branch, except when they control it. Then they want to muscle it up with executive orders, with fiats, um, with, uh, with rule by one man, which is basically what we have when it comes to Biden, who basically blew up the Supreme Court when it came to the student loans and almost a trillion dollars in so-called forgiveness. And then they're issuing rules left and right to get bureaucrats to vote and work the polls. And they're issuing fiats left and right to, for student federal work programs to get credit, extra credit, if they go out and they register people. Anybody who now signs up for Obamacare will get a registration. So they're working every aspect they can using federal tax dollars, using federal computers, using federal processes. And so they muscle up the executive branch when they're in charge. And then when, say, Donald Trump is there, they want to strip him of the authority. You can see this constantly. It's like all of a sudden they believe in federalism when you can have a a dumbass, lower court, barely trial judge in Illinois, in Chicago, Cook County, ruling that Donald Trump cannot be on the ballot, or some hack... Uh, Secretary of State in Maine or a majority on the phony Supreme Court in Colorado ignoring due process um, they just feel very sure of themselves that they can get this done and just get it done for themselves so the executive branch always muscles up under the Democrats and then it comes under the tack under the Republicans and they have the benefit of two and a half million bureaucrats the vast majority of whom not all but the vast majority of whom support them they won't leak against them They won't push back against them. They will work with them as opposed to a Republican where they're constantly trying to sabotage them in the executive branch. But this is also why you hear constantly about government shutdowns like it's a nuclear war. They don't care if the private sector shut down. They don't care when blue states were shutting down the private sector during COVID. They don't care if they regulate them out of business, tax them out of business. It doesn't matter. But when it comes to the government, Even though there's more national holidays today than I can even think of, there are three-day holidays and all the rest. When it comes to the federal government, you cannot shut that place down for a day because the world will come to a stop. That world will come to a stop. So they're in the business of empowering their bureaucracy, of expanding its reach, of having it regulate the economy, regulate your lives, regulate everything about you and and where you live, whether it's a ceiling fan or whether it's a washing machine, whether it's your automobile, whether it's the kind of paint you use or the kind of roofing materials you use, and on and on and on and on. That's why I say it's a post-constitutional 
America. Excellent call. Thank you for your call, Brett. Really good point. Let's go to Dave in Michigan. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Matamora, Michigan. How do you pronounce that, Dave? Metamora. Metamora. Ooh, sounds like uh, some kind of a wine or something. But anyway, go right ahead. It could be. Yes, never mind. <laughs> Mark, first and yes, foremost, sir. it is an absolute pleasure to finally speak with you. Thank you. Uh, I'm calling in. Uh, well, thanks for taking my call. Uh, I'm calling you. In Are you a dual citizen? I'm just will... checking. Uh, no, no. Uh, I just want to make sure. Uh, my great-grandparents came over from Poland uh, yes. when World War II was uh, going on. And, uh, well, no, then I you're am suspect. a U.S. citizen. I, I am somewhat suspect. Yes. By the way, I kind of am a dual citizen. I mean, I'm a resident of Florida, but we also have a home in Virginia. Does that make me a dual citizen? I guess it does. Uh, anyway, go right ahead. You're an American. Got it, baby. <laughs> Hey, uh, sorry, I'm standing outside. I didn't want to lose my signal in the house. I'm in a rural yes. area. Okay. EVs. I work for a large GM dealership in Metro Detroit. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're one of the larger ones. A month ago, the uh, I can't name this guy. Uh, uh, he's the lead engineer for the EV program for uh, one of the big three. Mm -hmm. Trading his daughter's electric vehicle in early off-lease, which uh, the manufacturers don't want to lease these things because they don't want them back. They want people Mm -hmm. to buy them because they don't know what to do with these things when they come in off-lease. Nobody wants the things. Mm -hmm. But paid $5,000 to break his lease to get out of it and buy her a gas-powered vehicle. This is this is one of the, the the head engineers of the whole EV program. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. It, it, they're junk. Today mm-hmm. we had a guy stop by and he had a new Hummer SUV, one hundred thousand dollar vehicle. Mm-hmm. He called it a. Uh, I'll put it in good term, uh, uh, good verbiage here on the radio. A, mm-hmm. a turd on four wheels, a hundred thousand dollars. He can charge it on a, uh, a 220 line for five or six hours, and he might get 100 miles out of the thing. It's ridiculous. It's a and joke. They're po- imposing California this? can't keep their air conditioners running in the summer, and they want Jeez. everybody to drive an EV. Well, how are you supposed to charge these things? And in the winter, of course, there's nowhere to plug them in, uh, you know, other than your house. No. Look at Chicago. The Teslas all mm-hmm. stuck in the snow, and they couldn't charge them. Yeah, I want to hit on one other quick thing. Yes, Just, sir. I'm not. I'm not doing this as a plug. Great read. I'm in the middle of the fourth mm-hmm. turning is here by Neo Howe. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. Politically in this country, mm-hmm. I think uh, we're at the turning, and you're hitting on a lot of it tonight. No question about it. All right, my friend. Great points. I appreciate you. Take care of yourself. You know, uh, it didn't work when the Soviet Union was in charge of industry, agriculture. People starved to death. It didn't work when Castro was doing the same thing. They still have 19, uh, you know, 59 Chevys down there and can't get the parts. You see Xi's destroyed his economy, so he's looking outward now. He's got his fangs out. He's salivating for war. There's not a single centralized economic system run by a government that functions properly or efficiently or creates prosperity. None. By the way, uh, Students for Justice in Palestine, which is funded by Hamas, this is what's going on in our country today, they put out something on their uh, website, on Instagram, sjp.mason, Johnson Center, George Mason University, Imagine that, George Mason, one of the great founders of America, the author of the Virginia, the Virginia Declaration of Rights, which preceded the Declaration of Independence by about five weeks. And so there's going to be a meeting of Students for Justice in Palestine at George Mason University, America, right outside of Washington. Your tax dollars? George Mason used to be a fairly conservative school. It's dying. 
It says, Decolonizing Palestine, Politics, Law, and Knowledge Production. Join SJP's distinguished panel of Palestinian experts, and I assume Jew haters, who will unravel the complexities of Palestine's historical narratives, political landscapes. Our speakers will also discuss the importance of decolonizing politics, I guess that's in America, law and education to pave the way for Palestinian self-determination and liberation. This is what happens when you don't monitor your immigration system. I'm just being honest with you. There's no assimilation. There's no sharing of that. So now America needs to be decolonized. Israel needs to be de- What does that mean? Here are the speakers. Nora, hold on, let me get my, where the hell's my damn magnifying glass when I need it? Well, Nora, whatever. Jihad Yabadaba, Muhammad El Kurd, and Rassam Haddad. He's the moderator, of course. Open to GMU students and community members. Registration required. If you wish to co-sponsor the event, you can contact them. And, of course, this group's funded by Hamas. I'm going to say something that's going to upset some people in Virginia. The Attorney General of Virginia has done next to nothing to address any of this. All show. He's done next to nothing. I speak for myself, not family members or anybody else. He's done next to nothing. The governor of Virginia cares about having a stadium in Northern Virginia for the Washington Commanders. He's done next to nothing. All his talk about the schools and what's going on in the schools. They haven't done anything. It's the lieutenant governor who I like. But the governor has done almost nothing. The attorney general acts like he's doing something but doesn't do anything forceful. That's right, I said it. Because it's true. I will never support him in any primary convention for governor. And Yunkin should not get any more senior position. He hasn't done anything. Okay. Everybody upset now in Virginia? Too damn bad. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. try and sneak in one more if I have time to. All right. Maybe not. Maybe not. Come on, damn it, computer. Of course, it fails me when I don't need... Ah, oh, there we are. It's too late, but let's just... Roger! Trucker, Michigan, quickly, go! Quickly! Hey, how you doing? And it's an honor to talk to you. Um, Thank I you. I want to talk about something I have that... It just say it, because we're out of time. Go! with it. I have an extra 98-gallon fuel tank in it. I can go over 1,600 miles, spend eight minutes to fuel up, and that's all it takes. I, I know. It's easy. so ridiculous. I, uh, thank you, Roger. God bless you, my man. It's so ridiculous. Combustion engine is fantastic. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, and emergency personnel, our truckers like Roger. We salute the freedom fighters all over the world and in Ukraine and our brothers and sisters in Israel. And mostly, America. God bless you. See you tomorrow.